So as many of you may recall from our uh, meeting uh, last year, in 2011, we introduced First West's three-year strategic plan. And this plan states our reason for being. And it talks about us making a real difference in the financial lives of our members. But it also conveys how we're going to do that. We talk about creating a network of like-minded credit unions with the size to work big, but still the grassroots common sense to work local. And this strategic plan that we came up with was ambitious and bold and inspiring. And it was based on the ideas, and, and the ideas that it were based on is really sparking a change and a new way of thinking about how we can partner in the credit union system. It's an untried model, as I mentioned last year as well. It's not one that we have a blueprint that we're working off, but we're making discoveries and through trying and evolving it, we're understanding the great things that can come out of this new approach and journey that we've started. So I'm gonna spend just a couple of minutes updating on some highlights uh, on our progress uh, as it relates to our strategic plan. And then I'm gonna have Tom Webster, First West CFO, join me for a discussion on financial performance. So first of all, I'd like to take a look at what we set out to do in these first three years and some of the highlights. So on the slides, I'd like to, to put out some of our five strategic priorities, and they're fairly self-explanatory, but I'd like to mention them because they're the filter that we use as we make strategic decisions. The first is to create a meaningful, simple member experience. The second is to create a high-performance culture the third is to transform to a continuous improvement organization. The fourth is to optimize our revenue through profitable, sustainable growth. And five is to develop a multi-branded operating model. And last year, you'll recall, I walked through those in a little bit more detail. But these five priorities we hold out in front of us and they guide the decisions that we're making on a day-to-day -day basis. And we strive to make a meaningful difference for you, our members. So what are the outcomes? So since the creation of First West over the last three years, we have grown our membership. We're very excited about that. We've introduced some cool new products. You'll hear some more about that later. We've looked at simpler processes. And we've provided greater access to financial and wealth management advice. We've also invested a fair bit in our employees and in uh, being a leader by providing them more than 30,000 hours of learning and development training. And we've trained 50% of our workforce in lean methodologies. So we can be better at creating consistently simple member experiences. But we're really excited that by the end of 2013, our plan, our goal is to have every employee trained in our lean methodologies. So we're also excited that we've grown our assets from $5 billion in 2010 to $5.8 billion now. And we've grown our lines of business, so this is our non-core banking business, and we've included a commitment of nearly $50 million to help fund small and mid-sized businesses through First West Capital. And we've done all this while flattening our expenses. You'll see some of the brands on the slide that we've worked with in First West Capital. And we've done this by keeping our expenses flat. So we're really uh, pleased at that accomplishment and, and what's uh, all been happening. The one other item in our strategic plan that we're particularly pleased about this past year and humbled by uh, is to be able to welcome Enderby and District Credit Union now, Enderby and District Financial, to the First West family of brands. So Enderby, and I noticed a few, uh, uh, both uh, former directors, now advisors, and staff from Enderby are here this evening, so uh, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to them uh, as they join the family. Enderby joined us in March, and that's nearly one year ahead of our of First West's original goal of bringing on a third credit union partner. Uh, so maybe just pause there for a second and, and, uh, and join me in welcoming Enderby to the First West family. Hopefully you'll get a chance to, uh, to meet or chat with some of them uh, here this evening if you, if you can. So we are very pleased with these accomplishments. But we realize as we've gone down this path that we're not done. But we do get affirmed by the progress that we've made, and we know that there's lots more that we can do to make a real difference in the lives of our members. So in a short while, you're going to hear from uh, our CEO, Lonnie, and our president, Paulette, as they share the highlights from Valley First. 
But before we do that, I'd like to invite Tom Webster, First West uh, CFO, to come up. And we're going to uh, take a closer look at our financial performance over the past year. So welcome, Tom. Thanks, Sean. So uh, we're starting something new this year. And we're going to have an informal discussion uh, as we go through uh, the, the financials. Uh, as you'll know, when you uh, came, uh, you, had, uh, you were offered the, um, uh, the financial statements at the front desk. Uh, they are also online. And if you feel like there are financial questions that Tom and I don't cover adequately in our banter, uh, feel free to ask those in our Q&A session, and we'll be happy to go into more detail on, uh, on any of the elements regarding the financial performance of the past year. So Tom, let's start with asset growth. Um, First West has had some tremendous growth over the last year, and we're at $5.8 in assets. Mm -hmm. So what has fueled that growth? We've had tremendous growth. Uh, we have a growth model, and over the last three years since we formed First West, we've grown $800 million, and it's primarily being driven by the personal and commercial lending. Great. So maybe talk a little bit about how that compares with our uh, credit union, other credit unions in the market and the marketplace in general. Well, the, these growth numbers are very encouraging because we're in tough economic times, but our growth on the asset side has been amongst the best in the credit union system, and it really reaffirms our model and the strategies you mentioned in our ability to attract, to retain, and to grow business. Uh, but it's not only on the loan side that we're attracting. We're uh, growth, we're attracting deposits, and it's really important to get these deposits to fund that loan growth anytime that ratio goes out of balance. We refer to it as a one-to-one -one ratio. We want to grow our deposits at the same level as our loans. When it goes out of balance, then we have to go into the markets and borrow, and that's an additional cost that uh, compresses our income. So uh, our loan deposit growth has been strong and uh, has helped fund that growth. Great. Another element that uh, has grown substantially for First West overall is membership. Uh, so maybe tell us a little bit about how uh, we're growing today, but also what that membership growth means for First West. Well, it might sound odd for a CFO to say this, but I think actually our membership growth is more important than our balance sheet growth because uh, a vibrant organization requires new membership. We require that influx and generation. Uh, our membership growth is amongst the best, similar to our asset growth. Uh, it's really a reflection of the success of our model. Uh, with those new members, of course, we get core deposits, which help fund that loan growth I spoke of. But it also gives us an opportunity to provide loans to new members to buy their home or purchase a car or grow their small business. Um, so the, the growth in membership is, is tremendously important. And I'd really like to take this moment to thank everyone who uh, referred friends and colleagues to us. Uh, your, the trust you place in us is, is valued and uh, we look forward to further referrals from yourselves in the year to come. Keep it up, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's tremendous. Uh, let's switch uh, from membership growth then to expense, expense management a bit. Um, so interest rates for mortgages and commercial uh, loans continue to be low, which puts our yield under pressure. Mm -hmm. um, low rates are great for some members, uh, if, you're, if you're borrowing as an example, but for the organization, it, low rates can be challenging. So as a result uh, of that, expense management becomes more important. So talk a little bit uh, about how First West's team has done in regards to reducing expenses and managing expenses. Uh, great question. Uh, we foresee low rates for the at least one more year. So that means low margins for us, which means expense management becomes critical. Um, what we've been able to do is cap our expenditure levels. So if you look in the statements, our spend in 2012 was consistent with 2011. But the story is how we've shifted the spend. We've shifted it to a more value-added strategic spend, uh, allowing us to invest in new products, uh, new services, and improved services, and of course, in a branch delivery. Uh, an example, uh, I'm going to give you two examples. In 2012, we were able to find $1.1 million of savings. And the first example is a reflection of our model, a multi-brand model, where we've economies of scale. And in this case, we were able to take over 100 contracts that we previously had and reduce it down to three. And this will provide ongoing savings in the year to come. The second example is a very grassroots example where one of our staff found a single savings 
or uh, spend that we were able to reduce and save $80,000. So those are two examples of one small or one large that collectively are putting money to, towards different spends. Um, it's important to recognize that in 2013, this current year, we're going to spend over $6 million alone in new branches and delivery services. And I'm going to leave it a little bit uh, later for Paulette and Lonnie to speak to that. Right, so expense management in that context becomes even, even more important. Absolutely yeah. critical. At 1.1 million just goes to offset that yeah. spend. And, and I, I love hearing how it's, uh, that uh, expense management wins are shared across the whole team and we're seeing at all levels that, that people are making great right. progress there. So uh, that's great to hear. So okay, for the last question then, Tom. Um, so First West, many of you may have uh, uh, heard, has been vocal on tax changes by both the federal uh, conservative government and proposed changes by the provincial NDP here in BC. What do these changes mean for First West and maybe talk about how this would impact us in the coming year or in years ahead? Hmm. <clears throat> well, it's been an interesting couple of months. Uh, in March, the federal government, the federal conservative government in their budget uh, announced that they were going to remove a tax credit that has been enjoyed by credit unions for 40 years. This deduction was put in place originally to allow credit unions to grow their capital because we do not have access to public markets to offer shares like the banks. So growing capital was really important. This tax deduction allowed it. So when that was removed, that effectively takes the tax rate for credit unions from 13.5 up to 25%. That's when it's fully implemented over five years. Added to this, at a local BC level, uh, the Liberal uh, government in their budget decided to uh, increase and pro proposed a 1% increase. Uh, if the NDP get in, they uh, say they'd introduce a 2%. So that'll take the total rate from 13.5 all the way up to 27. So that's a fairly dramatic increase in taxes. And those tax payments that we make, of course, can't flow into capital and will restrict our ability to grow capital. Uh, the regulator that we're um, regulated by here in BC has expressed uh, directives to the credit union system requiring us to grow our capital further. So again, this is going to make it more challenging. And then the final uh, piece to this puzzle or story is the NDP in their uh, election platform announced that they will introduce a 1% tax on capital. And this when fully implemented on BC credit, on our credit union will cost us approximately $4 million annually. So a significant uh, shift in uh, how our spend will take place. And again, this will limit uh, the product innovation and, and the branch deliveries that I spoke about. So what's really important here is uh, we have a lot of levers to pull in our model. I've spoken about several, our expense savings to offset some of these. So we're really concerned in, um, at First West about the whole credit union system. And as you know, Sean, uh, 1.9 million people in BC, or 42% of our population, belong to credit unions. And it's really important for us to have a strong credit union system to help the economy grow. Great. Thanks, Tom. I uh, appreciate that candid feedback. And I agree, agree wholeheartedly. And, and uh, we certainly need to advocate for the health of our credit union and the system, both uh, in all our just jurisdictions, federally and provincially, to ensure we've got a solid organization and a solid system. So thank you very much. Good. So thanks for the report, Tom. Thank you. Thank you.